I'm about to add static grass and hedges to this hill, but how much difference will it actually make? Let's find out. Hello and welcome to the Frontington and Backwards Railway. In my previous video I'd been laying the ballast on the tracks. Now it's time to do something about the rest of the surface, because that bare baseboard really stands out. And the sheer amount of brown is getting tiresome. But before we get to growing some grass, there's something else the ground needs. Bumps. Ground is rarely completely flat, so I decided to use up some of my air dry clay to mould a rough and uneven surface. I started at the front, although I decided it didn't quite have enough height for my liking, so I pulled it up and laid some offcuts of wood there to raise it up and start it again. It's subtle, but it should mean that there's a slight rise next to the station. And it certainly won't be flat. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure how prototypical this would actually be, because I'm not considering water drainage, but hey, it's good enough. Are we ready for some static grass? No, not yet. While I had the clay out, I thought I'd also fill in the track under the engine shed. This will eventually be painted to look like concrete, hopefully. It's just a case of laying it as flat as possible, building it up to the right height, making sure it's going to fit in the footprint of the building, and ensuring that the locomotive wheels will still be able to use the track. Of course, the reason air-dry clay is mouldable is that it has water content. As it dries out, it turns solid. But by losing its water content, it also loses mass. And that often leads to cracking, as the clay shrinks in on itself. Not a massive problem in my case, because most of this will all be covered over with soil and grass. But the larger cracks I had to fill in with a little extra clay. Are we ready for some static grass? Uh, no, not yet. Because at the moment it all looks rather snowy, which isn't quite the season I was aiming for. So next came a layer of paint. I'm using cheap ready-mixed paint from Hobbycraft, as that covers nicely and dries matte. In fact, I really like the shade of brown here. The soil down in South Devon is quite a, a ready brown and this paint represents that quite well out of the box. Or tube. Whatever. The engine shed hard standing got a dark wash too. This'll mostly be in shadow, so a generally grimy appearance will suffice. Are we ready for some static grass? Uh, no, not yet. You see, I still had a small gap between the clay earth and the ballast where the grain of the plywood was still showing through. So I laid down some glue and sprinkled on some brown scatter material. I, I think it came in a garden kit, but there's far more scatter than I'd ever need. In fact, I didn't even finish off the bag doing all of this. From what I can tell, it's basically just coloured sand. Once it was dry, I decided I, I really didn't like the colour, so I painted over it with the same ready mix paint, and I'm much happier with that. Then, finally, came the static grass. 
Yes, we are actually doing that now. I spread out a thin layer of PVA glue and started with a sprinkling of 2mm summer static grass from Gage Master, I think. Although the bag also says knock, so it's probably just that rebranded. And I followed it with a blast of hairspray and some 4mm summer grass. And in a few places some patchy brown grass, just for variation. It went down really well, even though my applicator used to be a fly spotter. In fact, if you're only doing short grass, then a cheap applicator like this is perfectly adequate. It takes 3 volts from a couple of AA batteries and converts that into a high voltage static charge, which is enough to make these small strands stand on end. The longer the grass, the more static charge it takes to hold it upright. This applicator tops out at around 4mm, so if you need anything longer than that, that's when you need a more powerful applicator. But for me, working in double O gauge, 4mm is a scale 53cm, which is plenty long enough for what I'm modelling. Grass that long would come up to your knees. The hill at the back is going to be for grazing sheep, which would tend to keep the grass pretty short. So I focused on the 2mm and just used some 4mm for variation in a few places. While I had the static grass applicator out, I also added some of that patchy brown grass to the scrubland next to the engine shed. I haven't quite worked out what I'm doing with this area, so for now a basic rough texture will suffice. These little tufts of grass came out quite nicely. If you do have any suggestions on what details I could add in this area, let me know in the comments. In terms of the story that this layout tells, I'm imagining the station to be next to a little seaside village in South Devon, which would be off-scene. I'd like to think that there has always been a footpath running through this field at the front, which the locals now use as a shortcut to the station. I'll eventually put a wooden crossing down to connect it with the end of the platform, but in my head that's not where the footpath was originally. So I'm installing some fencing along the side of the track to connect the two together. You'll see what I mean in a minute. The last thing I'm going to cover in this video is the hedges, because the grass doesn't quite look complete without them. I've tried a few different techniques. My first attempt used this white synthetic stuffing, which I covered with brown acrylic paint. It was messy. <laughs> I probably should have used gloves, but I didn't have any, so I just had to scrub my hands afterwards. Still, it did a pretty good job of representing the innards of a bush. So then I gave it a blast of cheap hairspray, seeing as I didn't have any proper spray glue. I probably should have done this outside, but it was dark and wet, so I just held my breath. And then I sprinkled on some green foam flock. I think some other brands refer to this as fine turf. The hairspray acts like a glue, sticking the flock to the stuffing, and then layering more flock on top of that, and then a final spray locks it all in. And the result is pretty convincing. Besides being cheap and easy to make. Just make sure you do actually spray this stuff outside if you can. Another approach I tried was using this material, which I think is a hanging basket liner, but it's essentially the same synthetic material. The advantage of this is that it's already brown. So I roughed it up with a wire brush, 
and then added the greenery as before to give me a, a low mat of weeds. I also sprinkled some lighter green scatter on top to add some highlights. This is coloured sawdust and works quite nicely as tiny leaves. Honestly, I'm still not sure if I'll use this, but it was a fun experiment. What did work nicely, though, was using this material to make thinner hedges, which was perfect for separating my little footpath from the field. It's the same principle as before, just double-sided and less scraggly. I also added a few small bushes using clump foliage to blend the hedge into the field a bit more. And here's another idea. I took that brown hanging basket liner material and really went at it with the wire brush, effectively breaking it down into its individual strands. And this ends up almost the same as the stuffing I'd used before, just with less messy paint. And this time, just to see what happened, I soaked it in some watered-down PVA glue, the same as I would use for ballasting, and then applied the foliage to that. The end result is the same, just without any hairspray. It's not much different, to be honest, but it's good to know there are options. I've been amazed by how different my layout looks now. Adding a few shades of green has brightened and lifted the scene, and already makes it look so much more complete. I mean, it's a long way from actually being complete, but it's just taken another huge step forward. And as a budget-conscious modeler, it's reassuring to know that all of this was done with very little expense. I got through less than a quarter of a small bag of static grass. I used a cheap applicator that used to be a fly spotter, and I've still got loads of that foliage left. I'll keep on making hedges over the coming weeks and months, as they're easy to do, and I need lots to line the borders of the fields, so I won't delay this video any longer. I also need some trees, so watch out for those in a future video. If you like what you see, I'd be really grateful if you could hit that like button, and maybe even leave a comment below if you have any techniques that you like to use for static grass and hedges. If you haven't already, remember you can subscribe so that you won't miss my next video. But that's all from me for today. Bye for now.